down the bottom there you can see the two thermo fans uh, I think they're about um, 12 two, two 12 inch fans you see I've just temporarily connected up these fan one on on the right fan two on the left um, got a fairly heavy gauge wire to it um, these go through individual fuses you can see underneath these fuse covers here if I can get one off hang on a second Each one of these fuses is 30 amp, um, so they're connected up to, I'll tidy them up once I make sure they're all working. They're connected up to this Davies Craig thermo fan switch here, so you can see it mounted down here. Um, has a little LED display, has a relay for each, each one of the fans, fan high and fan low. Um, what happens is You've got these two going off to fan supply. You've got the grounds coming back from the fans. You see I've ground them at this earth, at this ground point here. Um, power wise, instead of going another cable over the top of the battery over the top here, what I've done down the bottom here is on this, on this relay, or what do you call it, the circuit breaker. This is the one I showed you the other day for the, for the um, power steering pump. So on the hot side of it, which is the unprotected side, I just lugged it and I ran that power cord off to the power supply to run both the fans. It's quite a heavy cable on it anyway. You can see it, I've put a bit of, bit of heat shrink and some sleeving on it just to make it a bit, a bit tidier. So when I finish all this other stuff, I'll do the same. The green wire that you see down here runs off to the trinary valve for the air conditioning. So that trinary valve, again I've got to tidy this wiring up, is down in the back down in here on the dryer. You can see there's two sets of wires here. There's, there's the blue connectors, or the blue wires and the black wires. The black wires are ones that trigger, so it comes from the trigger wire, which is, I think it's this black wire down here, it comes all the way through the harness from the air conditioning unit in the car. That switches the, the trinary valve on, that trinary valve then sends a signal through this blue wire. This blue wire runs across to the pin on the back of the um, AC compressor. The, um, the other wires down here are grounds, one's a ground coming from, coming from the Davies Craig unit and one's a ground going back down to the chassis ground down here. The other wire that I have here, which is this yellow one, which I haven't connected up yet, I've got to run a trigger wire from the ignition. You see these things are really well, really well labelled. This says um, ignition on here. Uh, so I've got to run this wire all the way back through the harness under the dash. It'll go to key on, key on hot. Um, and once that's done, this unit will power up. It will power up, um, but it won't start because um, well, you can see here. I'll get it for you. You can. It's in my pocket. You can see here. Here's the. Here's a sensor probe. I've got to get an adapter that goes. Take that plug out. Put this. Um, I think it's um, quarter inch NPT through a, a like a threaded hole in there, and put this adapter in there. So this one down here runs the gauge in the car. This one here will start the thermo fans for engine temperature. And that wire, where did I drop it? That wire there will go to that. So I can just, um, if I plug this into it, I'll show you what actually happens. If I plug it in, it goes in, pull it goes in that way and locks into the pin. I'll just leave it sitting there for now. So instead of having um, engine, engine key on, I'll just trick this down here and I'll just I'll just put it onto the positive terminal down here which is that on switch and you can see down there that is now reading ambient temperature on that probe which is saying it's um what's that 22 degrees C 22 degrees Celsius um, if I if I hold that sensor in my hand here I'll let it start warming up I'll show you what happens. So it'll, the unit will power up. 
Um, it says 22 degrees C. You can see it's starting to creep up now, 23. It's starting to read my body temperature. So I know the sensor's actually working before I put it in there. Um, if I'm that cold, 22, 23 degrees C, I'm probably dead, but um, I held it before, it was up to like about 27. I just held it for a while. There you go, 24. It's gradually creeping up. Um, yeah, so that's reading temperature, probe temperature um, from the engine. So last thing I gotta do, tomorrow we should be firing this car up. Last thing I'm gonna do is get those thermo fans working. So if I take this sensor off of here and delete it, I think I can make this actually come on in error. It there you go. That's fan. That's fan number one, and 10 seconds later, fan two starts. There you go, fan two is running. So I know they're both working, I can feel they're pumping out heaps of air. Um, so yeah, tomorrow, go to the hardware, go to the auto shop, um, and I'll get, I'll get the adapter for this, I'll plug it in, I'll screw it into the engine block, I'll plug the cable in, I'm probably going to have to cut this cable shorter, it comes like this long, you could probably reach the boot of the car with it. <laughs> So I'll, um, I'll work that out. I've just got to find a bit of time to get to the shop. This is a bit crook again. Um, I'll probably just have to drop the kids off at school, go straight past Auto Barn or Super Cheap Autos. One of those guys there, find the right adapter fitting for this, uh, like a reducing bush. So from three quarter inch NPT in the block to quarter inch NPT on this on this sensor So yeah, you can see it's a pretty neat little unit. It's, it's a shame all the wires aren't a bit longer And you can hide these fuses somewhere else. Um, I could probably put a little fuse panel somewhere But just I'm just getting sick of putting wiring and shit into the car So I'll tidy that up as best I can. I'll, I'll loom it all up in some of this some of this braided loom Just to get it out of the way. This is the braided loom that goes to that um, that hydraulic um, power steering pump over there yeah, and I'll just get the car started once the car started and it's running and it's working off the sensor probe and all that sort of stuff then I'll start tidying up all these cables I don't really want to cut them and modify them if I've got to move them later so yeah I'll um, I'll get to the shop tomorrow whenever I get to it and I'll keep updating the video and I'll um, I'll show you what we're doing with it so I picked up what I needed from the shop after I dropped the kids at school here you can see this is a um, BSP um, half inch reducing bush, um, half inch external here and one eighth internal there. So that one eighth internal is the same thread as this one eighth external on the sensor. So you can see that it's a BSP T, it's a tapered thread. So I'll have to screw that in nice and tight in there. So I'll put a bit of sealant on it. And then I've got to screw the one out of the out of the block, which is down here. I try to get this one out um, <laughs> pretty tight. So I'm taking this one out over here. So the sensor will be under here and you'll hardly see it. Um, I'll show you what I get up to here. So there is coolant in the, in the radiator and in the block. So stuff's going to spill out. I'll, um, I'll reposition this camera so you can see underneath underneath there and see what I'm actually doing here. So give me a sec. So what I'll do is, I'll put a bit of this Teflon um, 567 liquid Teflon thread sealant on here. It's the same as what I got on those plugs in the engine already over there. It's um, quite easy to use. You just sort of squeeze it out around the thread. Um, easy to wipe off the excess. There's less chance of getting thread tape or anything like that stuck in your cooling system this stuff mainly squeezes out as you um as you tighten it so i've got the right size spanners here to hold to hold the external on that nut there i'll just turn it this way a bit more so you can see easier and then this is the right spanner for the actual sensor so i'll just screw it in nice and snug don't want to over tighten it because in actual fact, I could snap the end of the sensor 
off. So I'll just screw this in here. That's starting to get pretty tight now. You can hear that, that squeaky noise. Um, what that's left with is, is the ex extra thread sealant around the thread there. I'll just wipe that off. It kind of dries um, fairly clean and neat anyway. But um, get rid of those hairs there. Like I said, if I just keep it neat like that, um, where are we? There. I keep it neat like that. It's way better. Way better like that. With just a bit in the thread than seeing some dirty old Teflon tape stuck around it. So I do the same now. I'm going to put some thread sealant on the outside of this thread. Remove that plug. Quickly swap it over before too much coolant spills out. And, um, and then hopefully it doesn't make too much of a mess. We'll see if I can get a bit closer for you there. That's the... That's the plug I'm aiming for, which is um, that one right there. So I'll put some thread sealer on this. Here we go. It's quite thick, this stuff. It's kind of hard to squeeze out of the tube. Oops, lids off too much. Oh, there we are there. Put plenty on there, especially on the first couple of threads. Um, it's a, to me, it's a bit like when you're putting normal Teflon tape on. You got to try and keep it. You got to try and keep it one and a half threads away from the start. You really don't want. Um, you really don't want that Tefloni stuff going into any any cooling system or anything like that. I'll just sit that rag there. I'll leave this sensor right there on the side of that i'll screw this one out when i get it close to this is a, i already loosened this one earlier it was a real bitch to get out i have to put a little bit of heat on it with a heat torch in the hole and give it a couple of hits with a hammer it was a brand new a brand new um plug in a brand new thread in that in that new manifold so um i expected them to be tight all right here we go. Let's um, do the quick swap over here. Let's move the out of the way so I don't damage the paint at all. So it's just about to come out. Put the other one straight in there. Minimise the leakage. Come on, you bugger, start. Don't cross through. There we go. There's the, there, so there's the plug that I took out. It is just a. Uh, Allen head in hex plug so it keeps them nice and neat like on the other side of the motor. Um, wipe up that excess coolant because it when it dries on the engine it dries white and looks like shit and it's on everything down here it's on the water pump it's on the fuel pump a bit of it dripped off underneath but I'll get that it is I've got a drip tray down there so now I'll just tighten this fitting up um, when you're using these brass fittings, never use a shifter on them. You just end up with these big rounded off corners. If you get the correct size spanner like this one, um, you get a few little bite marks from the all the points on the on the um, actual spanner into the brass, but they're kind of incidental compared to a big rounded off corner of a shifter. You um, clean your hands, you can see. All this liquid Teflon-y crap all over my hands. So I'll wipe it off with a rag and then I'll, when I'm done on this bit of the job, I'll go and um, address it with a, a bit of um, a bit of hand cleaner. So now I've got the plug here. This plug actually clicks on which way? Um, this way. So, you clip, so that plug is clipped on there for that sensor. I'm probably going to cable tie it back underneath to that fitting and it'll run across the front of the block here you know, I can't run it anywhere else it will actually foul on things and the water pump will get caught in a, in a pulley somewhere so it's either this way or I'll run it back around the back here so it becomes more visible that way so I'll do what I said I'll cable type back under there run it through this way it's only a small 
wire to be visible there. Um, I wish I could have got that plug out, but um, it was giving me grief and I didn't want to round off the, the fitting. It would look terrible. So it's actually on there now. I can plug in, I can plug in the sensor, the sensor wire.